You probably want to accumulate wealth, or at least have enough investments that could take care of you at retirement. But you don't want to undermine your effort by making the wrong choice. Investment or asset allocation means spreading your investment across various asset classes in your portfolio. To a large extent, it implies holding your investment in a mix of stocks, bonds, and cash or cash equivalents. Investment allocation is a principle that you can use to maximize profits while minimizing the risk of investing in just one asset class. It's more like not putting your eggs in one basket. Let's pretend that you're holding an all-stock investment. If a crash happens in the market, as it did in 2008, you wouldn't feel comfortable with that development. You'll be tempted to make a panic sale even at a loss. You can't grow your wealth like that. You need to learn how to spread your investment across various asset classes. You can start by making up your mind on the combination of assets that you want to hold. Instead of investing in stocks only, you can do a mix of stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. Why is asset allocation important? Investment allocation attempts to balance the risk on investment by spreading assets among different investment classes by ratio. Each investment class has different levels of risk and reward. Over time, each will behave differently. Investment allocation allows you the freedom to choose an investment plan that's the most suitable to you based on your goals, age, and ambition. You can take advantage of the compounding effect and the time value of money. Asset allocation offers you protection against a major loss of investment should things ever go wrong in one investment class. Different Classes of Asset Allocation There are three main classes of asset allocation. 1. Stocks 2. Bonds and 3. Cash or Money Market Securities Among these three classes, there are subclasses such as Large Cap Stocks These are shares issued by companies with a market capitalization above $10 billion. Mid-cap stocks. These are shares issued by companies with a market capitalization between $2 billion and $10 billion. Small cap stocks. These are shares issued by companies with a market capitalization of less than $2 billion. These equities will have a higher risk because their liquidity is lower. Fixed income securities. These are highly rated corporate or government bonds that pay the holder a certain amount of interest. The interests are paid periodically or at maturity. There is a return of the principal at the end of the agreed period. These securities are less volatile and less risky than stocks. International Securities This is any security issued by a foreign company and listed on a foreign exchange. Emerging Markets These are securities issued by companies in developing nations. Investing in emerging markets offers a high potential return, but it also poses a high risk. The risks are a result of instability in policies and structures in those countries and the lower liquidity. Real Estate Investment Trusts This involves picking up shares in an investor's holdings of mortgages or properties. Money Market This includes investments in short-term debt. Short-term debt is usually a year or less. The most common money market investment is the treasury bills. What should be your ideal asset allocation? Your ideal asset allocation should be a mix of investments, from most volatile to the safest. That way you could maximize your return on investment ROI, over time. Your selection should include stocks, bonds, and cash or money market securities. Note that the percentage of your portfolio you may assign to each class of investment should depend on the time frame you're working with and your risk tolerance. You must understand that this isn't a one-time decision. You will need to revisit your choices from time to time to see if they're still meeting your needs and goals. If there is the need to make adjustments in some places, you may have to make the required adjustments. For instance, a much younger person can be more daring in their choices, but a person getting closer to the retirement age has to be much more conservative. Let's look at this scenario. We have two guys as a case study, Brian and Mark. Brian is a 21-year-old college graduate he just started working and has decided to start building his investment portfolio early. So, he puts 80% of his investment on stock, 10% on bonds, and 10% in the money market securities. Brian takes this decision because he's planning for the next 30 to 40 years. He does not have to bother about the fluctuations in stock prices or the crashes that could happen in the market within those years. He knows that his investment would have grown massively in the next couple of decades. On the other hand, we have Mark. Mark is a 50-year-old worker who's been struggling with his finances. 
but he suddenly realized he's not made enough plans for his retirement. In 10 years, he will be due for retirement. While picking his investment portfolio, Mark will be more conservative in choices. He knows that time is not on his side and can't afford to put his money in any risky venture. His investment portfolio will look like this, 10% in stocks, 30% in bonds, and 60% in the money market securities. You shall get a clearer picture shortly. Before then, I'd like you to do something. Pause the video right now, click on the like button, and go ahead and subscribe to this channel. That way, you'll be notified each time we upload inspirational videos such as this one. Done? Great! Let's continue. How you can handle return on investment and the risk factor. The reason you want to allocate your investments is that you want to minimize your risk while also achieving your expected return on investment. To achieve this goal, you must understand the level of risk involved in the various classes of assets. Equities such as stocks and bonds have the highest potential return on investment, but they also command a high risk factor. Money market securities, such as treasury bills, provide the lowest return on investment, but the risk factor is the lowest. This is because these bills are backed by the government. Investors who have higher risk tolerance can go for higher risk choices. A young investor can build a long-term investment portfolio, knowing that no matter what happens mid-term, he still has enough time to recover any losses. Like in the example we saw earlier, 21-year-old Brian could afford to assign 80% of his portfolio to high-risk, high-return stock investment. He has 30 to 40 years ahead of him to recover losses and also to make adjustments when necessary, but 50-year-old Mark can't do that. Mark only has 10 years to get his acts together, so he needs to tread more carefully. Mark's getting close to his retirement age and will not want to mess with his investments. High-risk choices are more befitting for young investors. However, as time goes on, an investor should reduce their risk exposure. Everyone wants to retire with a sizable volume of assets in a secure investment. For instance, in the case of Brian, now that he's in his 20s, he can afford to take all the risks. But as he gets closer to middle age, the structure of his investment portfolio should have a new look. Instead of having 80% of his assets in stocks, Brian could hold just 30% in stocks, while the rest of his investment will go to safer money market securities. Spreading your assets through investment allocation is important because every investment has its risks and market fluctuations. When done properly, investment allocation protects your whole portfolio from the ups and downs that come with holding a single class of assets. You can choose a part of your portfolio to contain more volatile securities because you want higher returns, but the other part should be assigned to more stable assets. You can adjust the percentage you dedicate to each class of assets based on your realities, such as age, the number of funds available to you, and your level of risk tolerance. Keep your eyes on the following. 1. Your emotions. Everyone loves profit and we all desire the highest possible returns on investment, but you must keep your emotions in check. When it comes to picking an investment portfolio, selecting the assets with the highest potential may not be the answer. Crashes have happened in the stock market many times in modern history. There were market crashes in 1929, 1981, 1987, and 2008. Know that you cannot outsmart the market. No matter how good you are, your returns could be beaten by another investor, in some way or the other. The ability to assess the risk and return on investment is what separates a successful investor from the greedy one. If you're investing for the long term, get ready to hold your investments through the short-term market crisis. Fluctuations of a backward market could last for months and sometimes years. If you know you can't hold your investment during the downtime, then lower the percentage of the assets you assign to stocks. 2. Your Goals Our individual goals come in different colors. You may have a goal to pay for your child's education in the next 6 years. Or you may have plans to own a luxury boat in the next 20 years. You need to consider your specific goals plans, and purpose while making your asset allocation decisions. If, for instance, you plan to pay for your child's education in the next six years, you can avoid investing in high-risk equities. You can invest more in fixed income plans that are more stable and safer. On the other hand, if you want to own a mansion in the next 20 years and live like a king, then you should prepare your mind to handle the midterm fluctuations and uncertainties that occur in the equity market. Also, as you approach retirement, you should adjust your portfolio to hold fewer high-risk assets. Move more of your investment to fixed income assets that are more stable and safer. 3. Leverage on time It's best to start your investment journey on time. Starting on time permits you to take advantage of the compounding effect and time value of money. It also offers you the advantage of going into high-risk, high-return investments. 
The equity market will likely face a couple of bad years, but those short years will go unnoticed if your investment plan spans through a period of 30 to 40 years. If you miss starting on time, you've not entirely lost out, but there will be more dedication and more sacrifice to be made on your part. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, for every 10 years you delay saving for retirement or some other long-term goal, you should save three times as much each month to meet up. This might appear huge, but it's better to start late than not starting at all. Let's look at it this way. Let's pretend you're 48 and you're thinking you should have started at 23. You may conclude that you've lost 25 years already and therefore no need to start again. In the next 12 years, you'll be due for retirement. Whether you start investing today or not, you'll be 60 in 12 years. If you don't start at all, in 12 years you'll have nothing. But if you start today, in 12 years, you will have something. 4. Just start Have it in mind that it's never too early to start, and it's never too late to start. You simply need to make up your mind to do it. Once you identify the right combination of stocks, bonds, and other assets, it's time to begin to allocate your investment. Just start. If you enjoyed this video, here are other videos you can watch. How Businesses Manage Money Cash Flow Explained What's Going On With The Stock Market GameStop, Bitcoin, Tesla. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Give the video a thumbs up if you found value, and if you're new to the channel, welcome and subscribe for more content like this. With that said, have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next one.